Ever wonder how a sample of anything is processed and tested with such precision that it can measure contaminants into parts per million or parts per billion? In the case of our story, how does a nugget or kibble or a blob of canned dog food get tested for a contaminant like the euthanasia drug pentobarbital? Ellipse Analytics Director of Operations and Quality, Dr. Sean Callen, walks us through the basics. So, uh, one of the biggest challenges when you're trying to analyze something like dog food is getting it into a state where you can measure it. You can't just take a piece of kibble and stick it in a machine. It'll break the machine. So, scientists have developed techniques that allow you to basically pull out the things you want to measure and get them into a liquid form. So, contaminants? So, contaminants, pentobarbital, anything that you're interested in. So, every single one of our samples will be put through this, this exact process. Yep. Think of it like filtering your water, except we're filtering your dog food and we're filtering out stuff that we don't want to measure so that we get the stuff that we do. In this case, we're having them look for the deadly drug pentobarbital. It is typically used to euthanize companion animals, but last year was found in a number of high-end commercial pet foods. So one of the biggest problems with the pentobarb as a method is that pentobarbital is difficult to get out of whatever it's already in. Compared to some of the other things that we measure in this lab, there are a lot of sort of extra steps involved. For example, the pentobarb has to shake overnight for hours and hours and hours in a solution with the food in it to sort of start to dislodge the chemicals in question. Pentobarbital is so persnickety that it actually takes upwards of two days just to get the sample where it needs to be to be able to analyze it. Samples are run in batches of 8 to 12 products at a time. Each batch takes a total of three days to complete. After you add in certain chemicals, uh, they need time to react with each other. And so this is, ensures a constant mix of those chemicals to make sure it's an even distribution. Because sometimes if you just take it and shake it a few times, you'll wind up with chemicals unevenly distributed throughout, and then you don't get a clean extraction of the chemical you want. So this ensures that all of your samples get an even mix. This Ferris wheel rotates continuously at 30 rotations per minute. The interesting thing about an analysis like this is the majority of the time and the effort goes into that initial prep. It's getting the pentobarbital out of the pet food and into something that we can measure. Once we get it into that form, it's actually pretty easy to measure. We use something called an LC Tandem MS that stands for Liquid Chromatography Tandem Mass Spectroscopy. And this lets us measure things at a much lower level than we otherwise would be able to. We're able to measure things down into the single digit parts per billion, which is very, very small. A part per billion is a single square of toilet paper in a roll stretching from New York to London. So is this the machine that will identify the pentobarbital? Absolutely, yes. So after we go through that whole extraction process of trying to get the pentobarbital out of the food and into a liquid, we'll load it into this machine. This set of the machine here will actually separate everything out, including the pentobarbital molecules, and then this machine will identify it as pentobarbital. After the sample runs through the machine, it comes under the computer as peaks. Now each of these little spikes that you see on this graph is a different molecule. And the trick that the analyst has is they have to figure out which of those little spikes corresponds to the pentobarbital. And we do that through running all sorts of standards and checks. We load uh, just pentobarbital in sort of a blank in there. And so we'll see where the pentobarbital appears. And then we use that to fine tune exactly what we're looking for. And so what he's doing right now is he's actually verifying that what was in the sample actually showed up in the data and then he's using computing software to calculate not just where or if that sample is present but how much. Any samples that test positive for the contaminants in question are retested at the lab. They are then sent to a second independent lab for validation tests to confirm or contradict the initial results. No information is reported unless the labs independently come to the same conclusion.